Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see, let's add another, let's let another student take this test so that we can see if we have a list here. That's very nice. And um, yeah, actually, let's do that. Now, there's a slight problem here that we may not be apparent already. And if we go back to our, um, this is the uh, single test uh, controller. So this is the query where we read the student scores. The only problem with this is it doesn't take into account. Ah, look what I've just done. That wasn't good at all. So it doesn't take into account the fact that somebody is already is taking the test and they haven't submitted it yet. So inside answer tests here, we should make sure that we are only reading scores of students that have submitted length number one and have been marked. So both marked and submitted must be equal to one for us to actually show. Otherwise, we'll have a list of students that haven't completed uh, taking this test and then we'll see zero percent there, which is not cool. So what I'll do is on the where clause, I'll start with those. So I'll say where submitted is equal to one and uh, marked is equal to one as well then and test id is equal to test id now uh, computers computers it's better i move these guys from to there let me remove this and here uh, and so that these become the last thing to check it starts with the test id maybe that will speed things up when reading i have no idea just looks like it's more logical to do so nothing changes here which is good now let's have another student take this test so of course we'll go to the class itself and look at which students belong to this class so there's jane here and uh, let's go to our profile then we can use this information to log in as her so log out of course let's log in as jane the passwords are all the same it's just password so jane here we are if i click on tests this is the test i see here and you can take this test you haven't answered it cool so another person taking this test and this one let's say four and uh, favorite color green let's try red and that one so answer the question so this test has not yet been submitted then submit the test yes okay so i have submitted a test this time let's log out let's check out what mr vibe is up to and password great so mr vibe has another test to mark so as you can see there's only one test to mark but marked there's another one uh wait a second wait a second oh yeah there are actually two tests that have been marked so that is correct so click on this now before we do the um before we do any of this let's go to tests themselves and let's see if we can view the score so the score count is good here however if you remember this what we changed here if we hadn't added this like so we would probably have seen more than we bargained for look at that zero percent so that's what i was trying to avoid with that okay so now things are looking okay to mark this test shall we now of course this isn't working yet but um we will have it working soon so that's correct that's correct that is correct and let's save okay so marked and set as marked yes so this one got 100 percent very cool okay so now that she got all that if we go to marked we should have uh, three here but we have two so why is that hmm very interesting 
Let's go to mark nothing. Marked nada. Let's go to students though. Or in fact, end of term. Let me click on this one. This is for guy particularly, but uh, let's look at the class itself. Let's look at the tests. This is the only test there. Let's look at the student scores. So at least it has Jane at the top because she has 100% of course. However, I can't see that one on the marked tests, which is concerning, yes? But at least what we are looking for here is working. Let's look at why we don't have it here on marked tests. Hmm. So we go back to our controller. Let me close all these files just to clean up a little bit. So let's go to marked. So I am not an admin, so forget about the top part, we are here. So first of all, it gets me the classes. So let's see here which classes it's actually displaying. So we'll do show this here. That way we can tell where the problem starts from. So one class, two class, yeah, so two classes, and uh, that is correct. We have general knowledge class, very nice. So things are okay up to here. Where there should be a problem is... Da, 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 da. Let's see here. Data merge. Selector from tests. What am I doing here anyway? Hmm. Interesting. So student, blah, blah. So I need to know what's inside data here. I have no idea what this is giving me. So let's look at what's in there. So data has zero, one, two. Okay, so things look okay up to here uh, because it's showing me the tests. This is, What's happening here? Yeah, the tests. Three tests. However, here I have two tests. So what is going on? So things are okay up to here. And then marked. Uh, oh, wait a second. This one should have a marked thing. So let's click on answered tests. There are three of them and all three are marked and submitted. Yeah. Uh huh. So, so far so good. So what's different here now? Marked selector from answered tests where test id is equal to test id and submitted is equal to one and marked is equal to one limit one so this does make sense so what's happening here okay let's go into the barrels let me do show and see how many queries are actually generated And why am I even uh, needing the extra? I have no idea, but let's see. There are three queries here. So reading a different test ID every time, submitted, uh, marked one, marked two. And this is, oh, okay. Okay, so this should actually work. Let me put this here as well. Move it to there. Let's check what the result of this is. So zero, one, two, isn't it? Zero, one, two. So, oh, wait a minute. Zero, one, ah, right. So this is happening twice, and why is that? 
Maybe the merge process doesn't work very well here. Now there are two different arrays. Hmm. Oh, it's because I still have this one here. Sorry, my bad. Let's refresh again. So they zero, one. Yeah, so only two of these actually return a result. So why is that? So what I want to do is, let me come back here. All three should return a result. So what I would do is write a query. And then echo out the result. Let me put the A and duplicate this and write some text like result. That way we can see the differences here. So refresh. So this is the query and the result is right here. So the result, that's one. And then this one has a result also, but the second one doesn't have a result. So why is that? Let's look at, um, might be something in the where clause here that isn't allowing that to happen. So let's look for the test ID itself and see what is wrong with it. Let me copy that. So yeah, troubleshooting can be quite a pain, but it's important to remember that you should not keep um, practicing troubleshooting because this is what makes you a good programmer. So let's see, PGKG. Where is this coming from? This is weird. We don't have that test ID here. Is this really a test ID? Yes, it is. Okay, so this is the wrong test ID, but it's not even in this list at all. Oh, here there are only two. Ah, right, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. So because we are reading only the test IDs and not taking into account the users, this is why this is uh, melted together, I think. So, so maybe I should remove the limit one here. Yeah, I think that's what I ought to have done. And since I have a zero here, I need key instead. So let's do it for each loop because it's very possible that I'll get more than one result here. So I will do a for each loop and say for each. Let's put a there as key and value. And then I will move this closing bracket like so move these inward and get the key and put that key wherever there is a zero here and then we can continue merging all right so hopefully that will answer the question ah but look at that now let me see what we have in here if all the contents are valid. So let's refresh. Let me come back here. Let's just get the test IDs themselves. So if I get this ID and get this ID, uh, and this one as well. Yeah, this could actually work. Okay, so fine. What I'll do here is this. Let's just get the test, ID, the test IDs themselves instead of having to look through one of these. Let's, uh, let's create one query or uh, let's see here. Let's create one query here. So what I would do is if this count is greater than that, so I know there's content in that. So what I would do is I'll just say or tests is equal to um, array column the input is data and then the column key is test id uh, 
okay so let's replace data here with this one and then key and then this this should be the test id so we don't really need the key at this point because they're just zero one two let's put test id here though because each of these is a separate test id and then from here we're going to say uh actually instead of even um doing this because the problem we have is there are several of these with the same test id like this one but with different uh user names here so this will present a problem because we'll keep repeating ourselves so instead we need to run one solid query from here so what i'll do is let me remove the for each loop i guess uh, remove it we change things a little bit here and then here once we get all the tests we can merge them into one string so i'll say all tests string is equal to and then i'll say implode now the glue is small quotes and a comma so single quotes outside single quotes in here and a comma and then these big quotes are just to hold this as a string and then the pieces is all te tests so let me put that here Now, the only problem with this method is that this could grow very long, this string. So it may end up causing problems at some point to read this query. So we need a way to limit it. So where can we limit this? Classes, tests, hmm. This one presents a bigger problem than I thought. Hmm. Okay. I'll need to think about it a lot more, but for now this will work just fine. But I'll come up with a better solution here because the only problem we have here is, let me show you what I've done with this. So here I'll do show and paste like that and let's do die like that and if i come back to here and refresh what i've done is i've put all the returned uh, test ids in a string so this one then there's a string and a comma between the two same thing here I've imploded them. So I just need an inverted comma at the end and at the beginning to complete the cycle. Now, since these, these uh, test IDs are quite long, if let's say there are 100 of these, this string is going to be very long. And then the query itself, because this is all going into a query, will become quite long and it may take very long to execute, which may cause problems. So I'll figure something out later, but for now this will work as it is. So. To complete this, I just have to put, oh, let me undo this. I just have to put a string at the beginning. So I'll put one single quote inside quotes, concatenate that to the same thing here as well. This way, when I refresh, I have a quote there and then a quote, comma, quote, quote, same thing at the end there. Then we can use this string inside one single query and that query can run here and then the result will be marked like this that way we can get rid of all of this but we still need to run maybe run it for each loop to add test details because we need those as well so i guess it's not really such a lost cause here we still need this so the query should have this string in here so I'll say select all from answer test where test ID is equal to test ID. Instead of test ID is equal to test ID, what we'll say is in like this, and then put that string here. So I'll paste like that. All test string. So this in this, but let's put brackets here like that. Okay. So what in does is it to say, get 
test ID, as long as it's part of this string here, which is in this format, if it's part of that, it will be red. So this should actually solve our problem. So let's see if that actually works. And define properly property test ID on line 76. Where is that? Oh, okay. So uh, we don't need this anymore. We just need to run the query since we've gotten rid of that variable. Okay. Look at that. Now we have even uh, more problems here, actually. So this is insane. So it may look like we've made the problem worse, but we forgot one piece of code, which is this one that keeps merging everything. So let's remove this one now, since we are not doing that loop thingy. So save that, and that should give us a good result. Oops. No tests were found. Why? Uh, because instead of... Uh, uh, wait a minute. Because marked is empty now. So let's use marked here instead of A. So this A should be replaced with marked like that. Save. And let's refresh. Okay, so finally we have what we wanted. So different students, different scores. Okay, very good, very good. All right, so hopefully uh, you've learned something new here and I will see you in another video. Now, also here we can order by score uh, or we can order by date. Let's see what we are ordering by before we go here. I'm just going to say order by id descending so the earliest the last to be uh, marked should be at the top like that okay great looking good i'll see you